What is going on, everybody? We are back. ABJ presents Tornado Tag, episode 158, King of the Ring, 1995, which is pretty much a uh, general sense of one of the worst <laughs> professional wrestling shows of, of all time. Yes. Uh, it's, it's up there. Uh, it's up there. You, you said it best. It, it yeah, was, the less uh, said, the better. Yeah, you said it best. It was the... Uh, it was like a Monday Night Raw of its time on a pay per view. Yeah, there's such a thing as so bad it's good, or there's like something that that is like a there's something you can kind of pull enjoyment out of. This is just bad. This yeah. is just bad. The uh, it's, it's and it's crazy too because the the fun. next year turned out to be one of the most iconic King of the Rings of all time. Oh, yeah, you don't have to tell me I was at this one and not that one. You don't have to tell yeah. me how good next year's was. All right? You don't have to tell me that. <laughs> but before we get into that. it, we will uh, – I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a little – I don't know what's going on with, with StreamYard lately. Every time I have a guest on we do live, there's this delay that's happening, and it's driving me bananas. So there is – we may step on each other a little bit here when we're live or, or if you listen to this back. We're not uh, – I mean, there is no tag rope when it comes to this podcast um but it is uh it's going to be a little different but the um you know we're we are here live on a wednesday um so over the weekend we have been a little busy you know both of us doing things with wrestling shows or being burnt out from wrestling shows so we took sunday off but oh, yeah uh, we, we're, we're here on a wednesday but let's kind of get into it let's talk about what's going on this week in wrestling things that are happening as well as uh <laughs> i smell something funny Sabrina's the worst, absolute worst. But anyway, uh, <laughs> our Scarlet, Scarlet Joe, Cherry Look, Pie Hansen. What I forget the name. Yeah. I, uh, I had her. Her name is um, Nancy. Her name is Nancy. Nancy. It is Nancy. Yeah. Nancy. Yes. Yeah. I don't know what Streamlabs. So yeah, uh, times three combo. But we'll take it. Thanks, Streamlabs. We got it. Sure. Yeah. I think I think we get bonus points today. So, yeah, yeah, we were a little busy this weekend. You and I were both in uh, Philadelphia for the Fight Pit on friday yeah. uh so that that was a lot of fun that was a lot of fun and then we were both on the call at separate shows uh you were uh you were at new era pro wrestling i, I don't know the exact town um i but brought it. lions I, I'm sure lions were... some i don't know i don't know these town names uh, all those little all those little towns in northeast pennsylvania tend to blend together a little bit yeah unless I think what's the, the one that we of, like um, what's the town that we like Hawk, she, oh there, there's two of them. There's two of them, and they're on the same. They're on the same highway sign, Ashley and Sugar Notch. It just yeah, sounds Sugar like Notch. the name of, of a dancer. Now taking the stage, Ashley Sugar Notch. Ashley uh, Sugar Notch. I want to go uh, on a date with so, somebody in Sugar Notch. I want a Sugar Notch. Ashley date. Sugar Notch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right on. Well, I mean, the name right doesn't on. matter. I just uh, the, so, the town. Yeah. Oh, you want to go? Yeah. I think it's yeah. two different towns. I don't think it's one town. <laughs> and I was, of course, um, I, I was, of course, at AXW. They had a really fun show, We the People. Uh, they will be taking it outside at Brewfest next weekend, and I think we'll both be in attendance there. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, we're we're kind of bringing the band back together. We don't do good. We don't we don't get to do commentary very often, but when we do, I feel like we knocked it out of the park. Uh, we don't get booked yep. in the same place to do that job anymore, really. Uh, but we're gonna do some commentary at Brewfest, uh, School County Brewfest, uh, Pilgrim's third anniversary. I think this is like the sixth or seventh installment of Brewfest. I could be wrong, but uh, we're gonna be outside in the elements watching some great wrestling, uh, courtesy of AXW and Pilgrim Brewing Company. Um, I know for get, the we, we get to check. Okay, there's that jumping over thing. Yeah, the delay. Uh, we get to check. We get to check one thing off of the uh, off of the old bucket list. We get to work. We get to work with the best ringside doctor a lot. We get to work with Doctor Frank Romascavage a lot. But as far as commentary wise, at least you have. But I have never worked with the greatest ringside cameraman in the history of professional wrestling. That changes on Saturday. We're working with the Hall of Famer, Smart Mark Gary, and I can't yeah. wait. When when did I work with Smart Mark Gary? He did camera for think... like um I oh, oh no you didn't do IWTV one hundred I did um, um well actually we didn't do commentary okay. I just did uh I did ring announcing with Smart Mark Gary yeah uh at Pil uh, Bruce Giving but I, I don't think I've ever done um commentary I, with I've with done Smart music I've done music. Yeah. yeah there we and we've yeah. never called a Tony Depp match. Wait. 
I never called a Tony Devin match. But you, you haven't. Have. I've called two. I, I I've called. I've called three now. I take that. I've called three. Yeah, but so for the people uh, uh, yeah. listening at home, are, are are listening to the car later. Um, so a little something new has changed for me. Your boy is now the official. There you go. PWF YouTube Intercontinental Champion. This belt made by Ruta Entertainment. The the R's right there. It is absolutely beautiful, Brian. I, I took it home. It is. Uh, I had my family hold it, and they're like, "That's fucking heavy." And I was like, "Yeah, it's no joke. It's thick <laughs> as shit." Um, we got no. the ABJ podcast on the one thing. We got the five mm-hmm. questions with ABJ and the other. We got a little bit of a gold tip. We got the TWF, the Root of Entertainment, and another ABJ podcast. But there may be more another title coming very soon. Uh, so keep your eye out for that. And uh, maybe it's tornado tag related, right but so I was, yep. I kind of made a joke. I didn't know that spinner Possibly. titles were a, a possibility that we were able to get custom spinner titles. It's probably going to cost oh, more, no. but I think no, down the road, do you know, you know, a spinning tornado, it should cost less, a spinning tornado. And no, yeah, I, it, it's going to spin the wrong way. That's a hurricane. A tornado <laughs> spins this way, not around. It's a top no, down view. No, no, no. Okay, but no, maybe not that. It's all. But no. I uh, the cold. Look, of look. ABJ. If anybody can make, if anybody can make it work, sure, sure. Yeah, if anybody can make it work, it's Mister Ruda. Mister yeah. Ruda. Yeah, I, I know. I that, that's a good idea. I like that idea. That that's a good idea. But no, in, in this house, we 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 praise Mister Ruda. Mister Ruda is uh is is one of the best. So. If you're if you yeah. are looking for a title, if you have a fantasy fantasy football season cup, if you have a fantasy football league, you want a title for your fantasy football league, you want to have your own personalized title, Ruta Entertainment is the place to be. Mr. Ruta does amazing work, top flight guy. You wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna do business with good people, it doesn't get much better than Mr. Ruta. Yeah, and you can do completely custom from the ground up. You don't have to do what I do into the spoof. Um, I like spoofs, mm-hmm. I think they're fun. Um but the uh, so speaking of the title, one of the things we are going to be adding to the show in the rotation throughout the months is one pe- people like the the reviews, they like the show reviews, they like the uh, the history of people. Um, the movie reviews have been fun, but people want the history of title belts. So that's something we are going to be adding to the rotation. Is adding that in possibly next month. I'm not exactly sure what title we're going to start with. So um, as the show progresses, if you has if you have any idea of future content, please put it in the chat, and we will 100 percent uh, add it to our list and get going with that. Um, my brother says I was looking for a belt they made, and it made me a hardcore title for the Twitch channel. That would be cool. Um, yeah. So it, it's the, the like I said, he does great work. So definitely hit him up. Tell him de- we the problem with that is he's going to defend it any time. Yeah, well, I I can not defend this title. Could defend it any time. I'm not medically cleared to to wrestle, so these this can never be okay. defended, unfortunately. Yeah. But All right. BP, what's going on in wrestling right now that that's catching your eye that you're enjoying? I'm gonna be honest. I I have been so out of the loop when it comes to modern wrestling. I haven't been watching, but I have live TV tonight, so I will be watching Dynamite. Right on. So. I mean, SummerSlam is, I think, this weekend, he says. Yes, not this Saturday. percent sure. I believe it is this Saturday. Oh, no, 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 no. It's next Saturday, August. Um, August yeah, this Saturday is still July. It's, it's the first Saturday in August, so it's next weekend. That's a bummer. Um, that would have been cool to watch at so. Brewfest. After Brewfest, it's, if we could survive it, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I am going to be... I am going to be in no condition to watch wrestling on Saturday night. I am going to be in no condition to watch wrestling. Uh, yeah. So I, I think one of the big stories that could possibly, and this is kind of, it's all folding in on one another, is there was just recent news. I think it, I think the official word came down within the last few hours that the NBA, and I am getting the wrestling here, but the NBA has announced its new rights deals, which will take effect next year. So the fall of 2025. And they have announced that they're going to have TV rights deals split up between Disney, which is ABC and ESPN, who already have the NBA. Um, Comcast, which is NBC Universal, which is now bringing the NBA back to NBC, which means we get that awesome uh, NBA on NBC music once again, not just every four years for the Olympics. And then uh, the third rights package, which is a brand new rights package, 
is going to Amazon for Amazon Prime Streaming. What this means to pro wrestling is that unless something changes, the NBA is now off of Warner Brothers Discovery after, ne after this next season, which is TBS, TNT, and Max. And, yeah. and TBS or Warner Brothers Discovery is saying that uh, what the NBA is saying is that they had a the Warner Brothers Discovery made a matching offer for the Amazon deal and that the NBA rejected it in favor of the Amazon deal. Warner Brothers Discovery is arguing that they that Amazon doesn't have the right to that, that they just had the right to match. And if they matched, then the NBA had to accept their offer. I'm guessing between the NBA's lawyers and Amazon's lawyers, they're going to be able to get that cleared and that the NBA will be on Amazon. What this means is now uh, there's already been rumors that an AEW rights deal with Warner Brothers Discovery is imminent. And I think, and this is just me, I'm no, by, by no means a media expert, it's just me kind of trying to apply some common sense to this. I think this is good news for AEW because now they're a bigger fish in the Warner Brothers Discovery pond. Yep. That the Warner, Warner Brothers Discovery now has a lot of extra money and they can throw some of that money AEW's way. It means fewer preemptions. Um, uh, it means maybe, who knows, Dynamite may go back to TNT now. Uh, because, But I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. I know the Big Bang Theory is a very good lead-in for them, so maybe there'll be a net negative. Um, and it also it also probably means they're not going anywhere. And yeah. a long-term deal with a healthy rights fee is good news for AEW. And whether you, whether you like them or not, not, a strong AEW is good for professional wrestling. It's yeah. going to make a lot of guys a lot of money. It's going to give a lot of people a lot of opportunity. It's good for wrestling. Yeah. Uh, and I think as of right now, if you are in Europe, uh, you can watch mm -hmm. AEW pay-per-views are all on HBO Max. They're all like you can watch Forbidden Door right now on HBO right. Max. So it looks like the deal is kind of happening, but it, they don't think that I think they're saying that it's not like public yet or maybe not inked to paper, but it's right. it's it's looking like it's likely, which also another thing too, uh, Texas, after they had a couple weeks ago, they did a, 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 a ROH and taping in Texas and they said they're really going to start ramping up right. ROH to be its own show, its own traveling circuit. Um, and it's not going to be like crammed mm -hmm. into a night where you have dynamite collision and ROH stream the right. same night. It's going to be its own thing very soon, which is good because we said when ROH kind of was bought by them and we looked at the roster, we're like, that's the roster of pro wrestling we want to watch. Like that's at the time Claudio was going to be the champion. You know, right. Athena's your champion, still is the champion. You got people like Billy Starks there. Like there's a lot of exciting things to watch in ROH. So if they get a TV deal where it's more readily, readily available and then ROH library comes with it, that's money for a, that's, that, that's, that's why you made that purchase. Yeah right there and if ring of honor winds up going on max that is a bigger deal for ring of honor than separate tapings separate tapings yeah. mean nothing if nobody can watch the product the border for entry for the ring of honor product is way too high the, yeah. they're only to use tony khan's phrase you have to be an absolute sicko to pay ten dollars a month just for ring of honor stuff yeah. you have to be and not even the pay-per-views you don't even get the pay-per-views for it i know Th that, that, yeah you don't even, yeah, like you have to be the hardest of the hardcore fan. I don't I'm not, and I still it. pay for it. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't pay for it. Somebody pays for it. Like, Somebody pays for it. I pay right. for it. Like you, you have, right? You, you have to. It, it takes a certain kind of fan, like especially nowadays, where for and for me, like my thing is like between the wrestling I'm involved with, and then you know three hours of Raw, two hours of NXT, two hours of Dynamite. An hour of Rampage, two hours of SmackDown, and uh, two hours of Collision, and pay-per-views most weeks. That's too much wrestling already. I don't need more. Yeah, totally. But yeah, um, what else I'm trying to think of wrestling-wise that's going on? Oh, if you want to hang out with us locally, if you're in the local area, uh, there is a show that you guys can watch for free on Twitch uh, this Thursday, but we'll be yes. in attendance live. Uh, 
Fightertainment is back at Pilgaroo Brewing Company. Speedball Mike Bailey presents Fightertainment, so you can check out their YouTube channel, uh, his Twitch channel, and watch it live. But we will be in a per- we will be in in person at Pilgaroo Brewing Company. I haven't been to a Fightertainment in about a year, so it's gonna be really exciting to see everybody again. We haven't seen Speedball, and I haven't seen Speedball in a while. Our Veda, our most of that crew, I know Charlie Tiger is gonna be there. A lot of people I really like, so it's gonna be cool to see them. Uh, also, huge congratulations to Speedball Mike Bailey going to be bringing that X Division championship along the ride for fighter tainment this weekend yes. uh, after winning a little bit of a yes, almost yes. montreal <laughs> screw job yeah uh, a few titles changing hands there in tna nick nemeth now the tna champion oh i feel so bad this show's about king of the ring 95 it's not gonna be that good yeah this show's about king of the ring 95 it's gonna be hard uh so so and also our new new TNA tag team champions once again ABC Chris Bay and Ace Austin uh, once again the TNA tag team champions. I love that they're tag so team champions, but that. I feel like they're both should be single stars and should be possibly higher up on the yeah. card. But I'm 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 cool with them as tag team champions, but I think they they can definitely do more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else going on with wrestling or wrestling news that we wanna we wanna cover before we get out of here? We're not out of here, but I had something and then I had something and then I lost it. Um, and I don't remember what it is. We'll eventually if it comes up throughout the uh, oh, uh, yeah, (laughs) raw. Look, we have to start late because I I got out of work late, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, so raw obviously, I think I think people kind of assume this, but now it's confirmed the next two weeks of raw are going to be on sci fi. Uh, see, back here, I'm going to put the old man hat on, I'm going to put the old man hat on for here for a second. I'm deceptively old. I'm deceptively old. Don't let the baby face fool you. I'm 65 years old. I'm not that old, but I'm pretty old. The uh, the USA Network, uh, uh, they announced on Raw that Raw will be on sci-fi for the next week. But back in my day, back in my day, they just didn't show Raw. Or before that, I was really age myself, they didn't show primetime wrestling. I still hate, I still hate the West, and I love dogs, but I hate the Westminster Kennel Club dog show because once a year, you couldn't watch primetime wrestling or Raw because the dog show was on. I don't like tennis because two weeks a year, you couldn't watch Raw because the U.S. Open was on. And now uh, for the next two weeks on Monday nights, the US, uh, USA Network will be showing the Olympics. So no Raw in USA. It's going to be on SmackDown. Yeah. Uh, or it's going to be reason, on I, sci-fi, I, not I was, SmackDown. I was shook when you said your age. You look so young. Uh, we were telling people at the bar, he was 23 plus, 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 <laughs> plus. Yeah. Yeah. Plus. Plus, I don't remember. Uh, what well, actually? Let's let's kind of go back to uh, uh, f- the fight pit. What did you think of that style show? The bands, the, the 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 opening up the pit, letting the fight happen. A lot of fun. I mean, the no ring shows are. I am in the camp that it's not wrestling, but that's okay. It's mm-hmm. not everything has to be wrestling. Um, but it, it's a little it's a little different. You have to really lean on comedy and brawling and things like that. But it is it's fun. And I, and I, I do like the uh, the marriage of music and professional wrestling. It's you know, we it goes back 40 years to the rock and wrestling connection. It goes back to the uh, the man who invented rock and wrestling M. Harry Smilak, uh, who many, many years ago, uh, the there was a building that wouldn't let him run two nights. So he had to run both rock and wrestling in one night and, and rock and wrestling was born. So God, rest from that point on music. And, he's still alive. <laughs> still alive. Uh, so he's like the only guy from that movie who is still alive besides the younger <laughs> kid. Um, so, 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 and the barbarian. So, I, I think it's fun. I, I think it's something where it you if you it needs a a lot of logistics behind it if you want to i think ideally a show like that is very crisp there's not a lot of downtime it's always hard when you don't have a lot of budget you don't have a lot of manpower um yeah. to kind of move bands in and out and have the wrestling come in and out so uh it was a fun time though it was it was a very fun time i will uh i will never uh never not have a good time in my favorite city in the world philadelphia um except for one night in 1996 that we'll talk about a little bit that wasn't very fun um but yeah it was it was way better <laughs> King of the Ring ninety five. How's that for review? I'm gonna damn it with fame praise. No, no, no. It was, yeah. it was it was a very fun show and a very cool concept. The first time doing it, it's a huge undertaking. And uh, for the well, first, it was the first time, time they, that they, they came together really, and did it. Really but well. they've done other shows. Pro Wrestling right. Explosion has done other shows like that. Um, I'll tell you what. Okay, I yes. I 
I fell in love with the band, the sweepers. So this band goes on stage and they all dress like, you know, old school sweepers with like the painters, white overalls and stuff. And there's two singers and the one singer, uh, female singer, she, she has a, 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 a microphone duct tape to a broom handle. And then everyone throws their trash on the floor. And instead of moshing, wonderful. She, she, she moshes the, she sweeps this trash. And then while she's sweeping it out of the pit, everyone's kicking the trash back in. Um, I don't remember not two songs they performed because I was too busy kicking trash into the center. It was it was awesome. I had so much <laughs> fucking fun. Yeah. Wonderful gimmick. Wonderful gimmick. Yeah, that was. Yeah. And I also uh, they were the, the um the band before them, Los Campeones, who were the the surf rock band with uh, who were luchadors also and would just shout their introduction in Spanish and then play instrumental surf rock. Yeah, uh, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, and and the, and the lead singer full kayfabe the whole time showed up to the arena in a mask. Yes, showed up to the venue yes. in a mask and left in a mask. Yes, I did. I never once. The other two guys, the, oh, the literally the drummer, like oh, shows about to start mask on. Um, yep. that 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 lead singer. Well, they didn't really sing, but the the uh, the the lead guitarist, the front man, showed up to the building in his mask, left the building in his mask, did not take that that mask off one time in the middle of yeah. July in a city. Yeah. I love that. Cap off to All that right. guy. Yeah. Uh, cap off the blue demon. Yeah. The blue demon. Let's uh, let's get into our topic. So we have King of the Ring 1995. King of the Ring was the third annual King of the Ring professional wrestling pay-per-view event produced by the World Wrestling Federation. Now the WWE featured the ninth King of the Ring tournament. Uh, it, it took place. Ju- wait. They said it was the third annual, but the ninth King of the Ring tournament. I don't know. It yes. took place. On, so can, yeah. I, I can explain. I can explain. So King of the Please Ring, uh, for a while, was something they did on house shows. So they That's did right. it um, going way back into the 80s. And it's how Harley Race got the King gimmick. For a while, he was King Harley Race. So it started as a house show gimmick. And then in 1993, they, they put it on pay-per-view because WWF used to run four pay-per-views a year. WrestleMania, SummerSlam. Survivor Series Royal Rumble and they were starting to experiment with other pay-per-views so like they tried something after Survivor Series 1991 called This Tuesday in Texas which was a disaster they were apparently trying to tinker with the idea of weekly pay-per-views I think somebody's trying to challenge for your uh, your intercontinental title yeah. I'm told so I'm declared. this was the, this was King of the Ring was the ex- King of the Ring in 1993 WWF expanded to five pay-per-views with King of the Ring and now in 1995, they're finally breaking into the whole idea of monthly pay-per-views because in the seven months where there's not one of the, what they call the big five, King of the Ring being the fifth one, um, they would do In Your House. So this is the first pay-per-view after the first In Your House. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's the third one that was on pay-per-view. Uh, it took place June 25th, 1995 at the Core States Spectrum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This pay-per-view is somewhat notorious among WWE fans as it's considered one <laughs> of the worst pay-per-views produced by the company. The main event was a tag team match, which the WWF champion Diesel and Bam Bam Bigelow faced Tatanka and Psycho Sid. Uh, we're not going to go into the win. Uh, the ma- main matches uh, for the undercard were Bret Hart versus Jerry the King Lawler in a Kiss My Foot match. Um, and the King of the Ring final, which was won by our our uh, uh, our, our thumbnail King Mabel, uh, in departure from regular protocol, the Savio Vega versus IRS match was originally on Sunday Night Slam, where their winner was added to the eight man tournament, which is included on the WWF WWE Network feed of the show. Uh, so maybe Peacock, I don't remember. I, I think it was. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, so this was. Uh, it Um, is it's on peacock yeah it it had a hundred and fifty thousand buy rate attendance was sixteen thousand five hundred and ninety which one of those was bp um its tagline was guts i was one of them yes yeah um and i think what happened before this show was in your house one and then the pay-per-view that followed after it was in your house Mm -hmm. two um trying to think what else we got here Yes. Uh, we'll, I'll let you kind of get into some storylines um, when we get there. I don't see anything else that we can cover until we actually get to the match itself. Actually, I forgot okay. big wrestling news. Big, huge wrestling news. I don't watch a lot of TV, but people were talking about it at work. K- K- Kamala is is going to run for president? Well, no. Kamala's a, a for... There's two problems with that. 
Kamala. Oh. Uh, you have to be bo born in the United States to run for president. Kamala Uganda. Uganda. Yeah, yeah. And and also Kamala's dead. Oh. He's also dead. Uh, Kamala Harris is running. Kamala. For president. That's it. Kamala, Kamala Harris. Kamala. Everyone else keeps yes. calling her Kamala. I don't know. <laughs> At work. Now, if kimchi the... is her running. It, if kimchi is her running mate instant vote instant vote yeah everyone at work's like kamala i'm like the wrestler and they're like what are you talking about i'm like it cracks me up every time because <laughs> i could just think of him going oh what was the thing with him and fucking mean gene i don't speak english but well, you better start fucking speaking english missing your fucking dates <laughs> it was also oh, yeah. the old mean gene bloopers with kamala oh gene yeah, yeah, oh uh, gene E1 kicks in the house, uh, the, the TWF IC champion world of the world, Here, ABJ. Here's the funniest thing about that. The guy who played Kamala, his real last name was Harris. His name is Jim Harris. No. Yeah. It's Kamala. It's Kamala. He wrestled Harris. before he was Kamala. He was Sugar Bear Harris. Oh, my God. <laughs> that needs to be a yeah, t-shirt. His real last name was Harris. Uh, Kamala Sugar Bear Harris, uh, Kim Chi, president 2024. All right, we won't get into politics, but uh, I just want—I thought that was funny because everyone at my job kept saying Kamala, and I was like, you know, the uh, the wrestler is going to be the president. But let's get into it, BP. Let's kick off the show. We talked about it a little bit before Savio Vega. With you know, the show star studded, and and we get Razor Ramon, but he's just a manager at this point uh, at this show. But Savio Vega is yeah, going to go if, against IRS. If you IRS. like Savio Vega, boy, is this the show for you? <laughs> Savio yeah, Vega I'm with sorry, Razor yeah, Ramon so will go against over another. If you, <laughs> yeah, IRS Ted DiBiase for, for the qualifying match. Yeah, that this delay is wild. And, and on my end, there's no like thing saying that where the connection's off. It's it's really bothering me. Streamer is pissing me off. I'm not going to lie. So this is on Sunday Night Slam, and they explain this on the commentary because Razor Ramon had initially qualified for the tournament. And if you notice, when he comes out with Savio Vega, he has his ribs taped up. I believe it was a legitimate injury. I don't know if he was still, um, if he would have been able to go. Uh, it certainly would have made the show a bit better. Uh, but Razor Ramon is um, you know, taped up here. And Savio Vega is very new. Savio Vega is very new. He, I mean, not new, new. He was actually in the WWF for a while before this as a uh, masked heel named Quang, um, the ninja. He was managed by Harvey Whippleman. And Quang ran its course. Quang was not a great gimmick. And he, um, he was, um, I think he debuted like a month before this at, the first in your house because Razor Moan is locked in this uh, feud with Jeff Jarrett and Jeff Jarrett beat Razor Moan for their continental title at the uh, uh, Royal Rumble in 1995. So now, so now we have um, Savio Vega who would, do we remember who Razor Moan was and who his manager was before WWF? I can only assume that uh, this is talking about the diamond stud and diamond Dallas page. Yep. Um, Unless we're talking about like Star Starship Coyote, and I do not know who Starship Coyote's manager was, um, <laughs> or Big Scott Hall. My my favorite rate, my favorite Razor Ramon moment uh, before Razor Ramon was when he was Big Scott Hall, the AWA Tag Team Champion, and he's in the Wrestle Rock Rumble video, and him and Kurt Hedding take these flip bumps into a, into a swimming pool in Las Vegas. That's my favorite. That's my, I mean, my that's favorite a tag Scott team too. That that's an old tag. Like that's a solid tag. That's team. that's a great tag team. Scott that, Hall and Kurt Henning as tag team room. champions. Yikes. So, um, so Savio Vega and IRS is the emergency tournament match to fill in for the, um, for the injured Razor Ramon. And Sunday Night Slam was their pre-show. Uh, shortly after this, they're going to start calling it the free-for-all, and it's going to be on the preview channel. If you remember the preview channel, that was the, the channel you would watch before you had like interactive program guides and would just scroll through all of your... Your that match, was like your uh, pre-show on TV. Yeah. So it was literally, yeah, that match happened that night in that building. And it was on the pre-show before the pay-per-view went on. So so it's a uh, it's gonna be IRS and Savio Vega. IRS is kind of he's still around, but he's not doing a whole lot of wrestling at this point because he's kind of slowly working his way into a backstage role. He's slowly becoming um now they call them producers back then, they would call them road agents. Um so the, the previous era 
era of road agents is starting to work its way out, like your Chief J Strongbows and your Tony Gurias and your Rene Goulet's. Three actually stuck around for a while. But you still have your like Patterson Briscoe, and IRS is going to sh very shortly become one of those guys. But yeah, this one is, um, If uh, I know I mentioned it, we were kind of talking over one another. If you like Savio Vega, boy, this is the show for you. And this is the first of uh, quite a few Savio Vega matches. And it's a Raw match. It's a Raw match. Uh, very basic. Nothing, nothing earth shattering here. And Savio Vega is going to pick up the win and advance to face uh, the former two-time WWF champion Yoko Zuna in round one. It's actually going to be our opener. Savio Vega doesn't even, not only is he going to wrestle twice, he's going to wrestle twice in a row. Yeah, and he's gonna get five minutes on that match, uh, and and so there's a, that little backstage. I think he's at the backstage promo at this one or whatever. But uh, he's with Jim Cornette, which, by the way, I'm gonna be honest, I was not a fan of Cornette's promos at this show. Cornette in WWF is not. It's not Jim Crockett Cornette. It's it's not even close to Jim Crockett Cornette. Yeah. I, I didn't really like his promo. I thought it was kind of weak. But yeah, so we're going to get Savio Vega, and he's going to defeat Yoko Zuno in a quarterfinal match. He's going to get eight minutes and 24 seconds. So he's already put in a pretty good night already. Oof. And Yoko Zuna is not at his peak here. Yoko Zuna has um, kind of his size has kind of gotten away from him a little bit as far as his ability to work. And he is not the Yokozuna of like 1992 uh, or yeah. 1993 when he was a WWF champion. He could still move quite a bit. And so the other thing, if you want to talk about not uh, not that great, your announced team, uh, your announced team tonight oh, is going to be that, yeah. is going to be the uh, illustrious uh, the illustrious commentary team of Vince McMahon and Doc Hendricks. Um, I don't know if this is one of the brief time one of the times because there were a few times around this point where Jim Ross got fired. Or he may have had a belt of a bout of Bell's palsy and got fired because of it. Um, and I'm not sure. Uh, well, Jerry Lawler's wrestling, so Jerry Lawler is not going to be doing commentary. So, and a Gorilla Monsoon, I believe, at this point is your um, WWF president. So he's off a of commentary. Bobby Heenan's in WCW. So yeah, your your commentary team here is Vince McMahon and Doc Hendricks. And a little uh, did you know fun facts on the thumbnail here uh, is going to be King Mabel, you know, being hoisted up. But right behind King Mabel mm -hmm. are these two ushers who open the doors to allow the competitors to come down to compete for the match. Who are those ushers, BP? And those ushers, they are ABJ and BP Burke. I told you I was there. Yep. We are very old. Yeah, it's with us. Yeah, I told you I was old. Uh, nobody wanted to believe me. You looked weird Not with bleach blonde old. hair, too. I did. I did. I, I actually, uh, where I was sitting was above them. I was sitting so above where, uh, where these. Yeah. I did. Well, I wouldn't have recognized them anyway. Actually, I still I wouldn't have recognized them. But they were on TV before this is like um, jobbers. They they yeah. I I remember watching some old Raws from January 1995. And, I, and one of them I remember distinctly. Uh, wrestling, I believe, like IRS or somebody like that. Uh, but these guys so go have ahead. a pretty good I'll, career. I'll let you do the big review. Yeah, these they two had a pretty good career. Uh, they that is Matt and Jeff Hardy. Uh, yes, they are they are the ones opening the doors at King of the Ring '95. So a little fun fact: Did you know? Uh, I think most wrestling fans do. But if you're new to the game, we, we treat we treat every episode as we don't want to we want to act like you've never heard it before, even if you may have heard it before, because, you know, we do have some listeners who are getting brand new into wrestling, which is awesome. And we we, we, we want to cater to all aspects of fandom, new and old and maybe uh, just retouching something uh, that they haven't known or watched for a while. But, yeah, so we're going to jump into so, our third match, which is going to be the roadie real quick, real with quick. Jeff Jarrett. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so I want to give somebody, I want to give our audience here that that's something, yeah, everybody's going to know that, but here's something that you, a lot of people might not know how the relationship between the Hardys and the WWF began. There you go. So yeah. this, this, this is where you come, you come to us for the, uh, the real good stuff. So they were, they're obviously from North Carolina and they had a company called Omega which was uh, like their backyard thing. They grew into an indie a company. A lot of people came from there. Uh, Hurricane Helms, Shannon Moore, Joey Abs, um, a few other people. Um, 
some of the dups came from came from Omega. But one of the local guys who was a longtime enhancement guy for Jim Crockett Promotions was uh, the Italian Stallion, Gary Sabov, the Italian Stallion, who was always billed as the world spaghetti eating champion. And he was a guy who would do a lot of TV jobs for Jim Crockett Promotions when they would run the Carolinas. And he, him and uh, George South ran a, an indie in the, in the Carolinas around this time called the PWF, the Professional Wrestling Federation. Very original name. So when usually the way things would work is if they needed people to come in to be like enhancement guys, when you're coming to a town, you would call up somebody you knew locally and say, Hey, do you have any guys you can bring in? Like legendarily when they would do the, when they would do the, uh, the, the big mothership, um, six Oh five Saturday night, Jim Crockett promotions show in Atlanta for uh, for TBS, Mike Jackson, who still wrestles to this day. Action Mike Jackson. He, Jackson, he wrestles for GCW sometimes. He wrestles for uh, TNA sometimes. He's like in his mid 70s at this point, if not older. Uh, he would be the guy for them. So when they were around the Carolinas or anywhere by the Carolinas, sometimes they would call up Gary Sabal, the Italian Stallion. And the Italian Stallion uh, knew Matt and Jeff Hardy from lo their local indie their little uh, backyard fed made good in, in the Carolinas. And they would have the Italian stallion uh, bring guys in, including the Hardy boys. What they later found out was, uh, cause I think the Hardy boys were like 18, maybe if that at this point, they may have been under 18, which definitely they wouldn't do that. Now that kind of ended after the mass trans uh, transit incident in ECW, but they came to find out that what they, whatever they were paying the Hardys, the Italian stallion was taking that money. And then I guess, they like a he would drive them in. I guess he abandoned them one time. Um, so eventually the Hardys called Pat Patterson and they told Pat Patterson what happened. And they stopped using Italian Stallion and started booking talent around that area through the Hardys. And that's all guys like Jason Art, who became Joey Abs and a few other people. Uh uh, oh, what's Marty Garner? Marty Garner, who infamously was in an enhancement match where he wrestled Triple H and Triple H pedigreed him right on his head. Uh, that yes. he was the guy that got booked yes. through the Hardys. So basically, because the Italian Stallion kind of screwed them over, the WWF Hardys relationship strengthened, and they would start funneling guys in, and that led to them having a bigger role in getting signed. I'm going to try something know. real quick. Uh, start talking about the next match quick. I'm going to jump out and jump right back in. All right. So our next match is a surprisingly good match. Uh, and the problem with this was these guys were seen as very lower card guys at this point. It was Bob Sparkplug Holly against the roadie. So uh, Bob Sparkplug Holly, of course, would later become hardcore Holly. The roadie would go on to become the road dog, Jesse James. But at this point, it's Bob Sparkplug Holly, who is the underdog babyface race car driver. I am hearing a lot of background noise now. Oh, boy. All right, we should be good now. Much better. Much better. Is the delay any better for you? Uh, test one, two. It doesn't seem like it. I can I can hear you just fine. I think we're good. I, I, I'm trying a different browser. I'm, I, I was looking at like things that we could fix. Okay. Driving me bananas. Banana. Banana. We're t uh, you don't have to do the plural in wrestling. So I was just talking about Sparky Plug and the roadie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and, and this would be like if we had a King of the Ring pay-per-view now and one of the matches was I, I'm, I'm i'm just trying to think of people off the top of my head very very quickly here if one of the matches was the first guy that jumped in my head was akira tozawa and was, if he was still there i would say ricochet two, yeah and if you put those two together they're gonna have a really good match they're gonna have an, an incredible match that no one's well tozawa's over as a comedy character but these are two guys that tried really hard but the roadie had only been around for like five months. Bob Holly had been around a little bit longer, but he was, other than a really quick tag title run, Bob Holly was seen as a very much lower end of the card guy. And it, it was kind of like, why are these guys? It's like, why is the roadie in King of the Ring, but Jeff Jarrett is not wrestling tonight? He's the Intercontinental Champion. Why is Bob Holly in the tournament, but Owen Hart isn't wrestling tonight? Uh, yep. Why is Savio Vega in the tournament, but Lex Luger isn't wrestling tonight? So you had all these stars who aren't on the card, but Bob Holly and the roadie are, and the roadie's going to wrestle twice, and Savio Vega's going to wrestle four times. 
that's what um and, and you can this isn't this is a really this is like the rock bottom time for WWF's business kind of setting the table. 1995 is like the lowest point they had both like kind of creatively and commercially. Like they they lost a lot of money this year. They lost a yeah. lot of money this year. So one of the things that happens here is that a lot of guys like WCW is gaining some momentum because, you know, Turner's spending some money on it. Nitro at this point, I think Nitro, if it wasn't announced yet, it's going to be announced soon. Nitro is three months away, less than three months away, um, two and a half probably from debuting. And Lex Luger is going to jump. And, and and if I were Lex Luger, I'm like, they didn't even put me on this thing. Yeah, I would jump too. Mm-hmm. So what ha- what happens here? British Bulldog's not on the card. Uh, there's so many yeah. people that could have been on this card that aren't on there. But it's weird because like if going back and looking at the, the bracket, right? So this bracket went between May 14th mm-hmm. to June 25th. And if you look at the, the TV, like the first round was all on TV. So they show the, the bracket, right? Yeah. So you have Adam Bomb versus Mabel. And you're thinking, all right, that was, Adam Bomb. Those are qualifying matches. Yeah. No, that's the, these are the first round matches. First round was Adam yeah. Bomb no, versus well, Mabel. They were, they, were quali- they were qualifying matches. That's what they called them. Oh, well, they have it here as Wikipedia's first rounders. They had Jeff Jarrett Wikipedia. versus The Undertaker. You have uh, mm-hmm. uh, Kama versus Duke Drosy. King Kong Bundy versus Shawn Michaels. So you're looking at it, you're thinking the dumpster oh, is is Sean an Undertaker gonna oh, get Sean into a uh, 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 King of the Ring thing here? So like, you're, there's two names there you're excited for: Bob Holly versus Mantar, uh, the Roadie versus oh, oh, oh. the Clown, Lex versus Yoko, you know? and Razor versus Jacob. Oh, wow. uh, Jacob Made Blue, it. yeah. So when th- when this bracket came out, when I went to this show, I went to the show like. I was, I'm going to age myself here. I was 11 years old when I went to this show. About to turn 12. So I was in, uh, I was about to go into seventh grade when I went to see this show. So I, and I, I knew wrestling. I knew, I knew the truth about her. I knew, look, I, I knew like what was up. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't thinking it was still like a legitimate sporting competition. Yeah. But I went into that thing completely convinced. Oh, I'm going to get to see The Undertaker against Shawn Michaels. That's going to be really cool. That's going to be... I don't know who's coming out from that bottom part. Maybe Yokozuna. Uh, maybe Razor... Maybe, I, actually, I was like, oh, we might get Shawn Michaels and Razor Moan until he got injured like in the finals. Like, But then, like, we'll talk about it in a second. But yeah, I was... Yeah, I, that was that was what I was hanging my hat on. Oh, it's going to yeah. be Shawn Michaels and The Undertaker. Didn't quite work out that way. We'll get there. But uh, in this one, the roadie... The... The roadie is going to advance to face Savio Vega in the semifinals of the uh, the King of the Ring tournament. Yep. Uh, and then we're going to get, come to Kama, uh, which if, if I mean, we all know at this point is Charles Wright, uh, better known as the Godfather or Papa Shango. And he's going to be with Ted DiBiase and he's going to take on Sean Michaels, uh, which you gave us yeah, 15 minutes. Gave us 15 minutes. Well, they there. had to. They had to. Because <laughs> yeah, it ended in a time limit draw. <sighs> I want to have. Did you? I, I mean, I, I never listened to what happened when or any of those podcasts. If the, if there is an episode on this, I, I I definitely should seek it out. But like, why? Why did they just like there there is... not give a fuck about this show? <laughs> uh they 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 the whole tournament is designed to put over Mabel and the, the questionable decision here, because what this is building to is not, not that in your house, but SummerSlam the week at the month after in August, this is all building to the main event of SummerSlam being King Mabel against diesel for the WWF title. And mm-hmm. that match was bad. Uh, that match was not good. So this is all about establishing Mabel as your big heel. Um, so there's some reasons why we can do this this time limit draw with Sean and Kama. Um, you usually if it's it, there's like several reasons. One can be time. They don't, they want to cut a match, so we're going to give Mabel a buy. So because mm-hmm. of this is a draw, the winner of Mabel and Undertaker is going to get a buy now in the second round. Um, so it, it's going to do that. It's going to make Savio look like even more of an underdog because one of the things they try they, they try to really make Savio Vega super babyface here because they're in Philadelphia. They're talking about the Rocky Balboa thing. Uh, mm-hmm. They even talk about how the at this point, and we talked about this. We were in Philly uh, on Friday. 
the Rocky Balboa statue that's by the art museum right now. At this point, that Rocky statue isn't at the art museum. It's it's at the Spectrum. Like it, like growing up for me, it was all it was almost always by the Spectrum. It wasn't by the art museum. They moved that there later uh, when mm-hmm. they tore the Spectrum down or when they closed the Spectrum down. So the the um the big th- it, it, so having Savio have to wrestle four times or three times before the ma- the the finals. Mabel has to wrestle once. You're making Savio look like a big underdog, big baby face fighting against the odds. Do you really want Mabel having to wrestle three times in one night? That's another reason. And a third reason is if it's Shawn Michaels and Mabel in the second round of this tournament, and you want Mabel to win, what does that mean Shawn Michaels has to do in the second round of this tournament? How dare you? How dare you? But I I, I, I can't hear it. Time limit draw is the what way to What does he have to here? do? Uh, I, I've been a long fan of time limit draws, as we all know on this podcast. Uh, I think they've been, I think there's mm-hmm. really creative ways to. <laughs> the, they, they say Shawn Michaels was trained by Jose Lothario. I think he was actually trained by Mil Mascaris. No yab. No yab. Yeah, no yab. Don't work for me, brother. Yep. Yeah. That's what happened. Like that. that um, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I was saving that one for last. I was yep. saving the correct answer for last. Yeah, so uh, that's going to result in Mabel getting a bye in the semifinals and immediately puts well, him into the well, finals. First, he has to wrestle The Undertaker. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot. I, for- I forgot the match that happened. Because and... that's next. Mabel with Mo mm-hmm. will go on to defeat The Undertaker in 10 minutes and 44 seconds. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of uh, shenanigans here. The Undertaker is feuding with Kama at this point. Mm-hmm. Another match they're building to at SummerSlam is The Undertaker and Kama in a casket match. Uh, one thing we didn't mention, the under, uh, Kama comes out with these gold chains. So what had happened was at WrestleMania, this pa- this pa- the WrestleMania leading up to this, which is WrestleMania 11, The Undertaker, uh, the Undertaker this is a horrible year for The Undertaker. Um, he, had the, he feuded with the Million Dollar Corporation for the first half of the year, and then he feuded with Mabel, and Mabel broke his face. For real. Yeah. And he had to wear that mask. So... Um, at WrestleMania 11, The Undertaker is wrestling King Kong Bundy, and he wins the match. But during the match, Kama steals The Undertaker's urn from Paul Bearer. And what they said was they 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 took The Undertaker's urn, melted melted it down, and turned it into gold chains for Kama. And that's what he's wearing around his neck. It's the melted down <laughs> urn of The Undertaker. And and this is when The Undertaker is starting to veer in the silly. Well, The Undertaker was always kind of in silly territory, but this was the yeah. peak era for the the whole idea that the undertaker's urn gives him magic powers to make him recuperate so the undertaker is a little, a little more mortal at this time because he doesn't have his magic recovery power all of his magic points are stored in that urn so he's yeah. he's still he's still a wizard but he doesn't have his magic points because they're all in the urn that was stolen so he he can't cast heal on himself and do the sit-up yep. damn it right ruins so that's what happens so so that allows the that that allows that allows the interference from Mo and Kama to allow Mabel to drop the leg on the Undertaker and get the pin. And um, I, I can, I can, t- I love the Undertaker back then. Look, that that stuff is fun. You know, you know why I don't like that stuff because it's for children. And I'm not a child anymore. But when this happened, I was a child and I loved the Undertaker in 1995. He might have been my favorite wrestler. And when Mabel won that match, I wanted to go home. <laughs> so there, that that's what happened. uh sorry delay that, is still there happened. um so we're yeah so that that happens we get which what i said before we'll advance mabel into the uh finals because he gets a buy because comment sean michaels went to a time limit draw mm-hmm. uh we already know that the roadie has won as as well as uh savio vega so we're gonna get them them uh right here right now to find out who's going to the semifinals. Uh, and I'm sorry, in the semifinals to go on to the finals here. And we're going to go at six minutes and 36 seconds of Savio Vega and the roadie with Savio Vega coming out on top. Yeah. So your final three are Mabel, Savio Vega and the road. I'm trying to put this in modern WWF WWE terms and I'm struggling. I'm yeah. It, it'd I'm be like really struggling. Otis... It would be like if your final three was, yeah, be like Otis. If no, Otis turned 
because Mabel was a baby face up until like two uh, two months before this. Yeah. And him and him and uh, Mo turned on their manager Oscar. Mabel's mohawk used to be blonde, and when he turned heel, it was they dyed it jet black. And so now he's a heel. So it'd be like if Otis turned heel, and your final four and your final two, your final three were like Otis, JD McDonough, and Tazala, or something like that. That that's about that's... what we have here. That would be yeah. like your final three for King of the Ring. Yeah, but no, because I mean, Otis and Tozawa would actually have a history, so that doesn't that doesn't even work. That it would be like if it were um, I'm trying to think of somebody on like SmackDown who's like very low on the card. It, it uh -huh. would be like Otis. No, I I got it. It would, it would be like Otis Tozawa. Or no, that still doesn't work. It it would be like Otis, some like mid Carter from NXT, and uh, Otis that Brooks Jensen guy and um Tozawa. Fine, fine, that works. Yeah, it's bad. I'm just trying to say it's bad. Okay. It's pretty bad, yeah. <laughs> uh, why do I want to watch this again? I don't know. You picked it's it. Yes, yes. We are about to get to yes. that match right now. So the next match is going to be even Bret the Bret Hart. Hart match isn't good. Even the <laughs> Bret Hart match isn't good. That's how bad this show is. And Bret versus Jerry would be a fun. Uh, it, I, I don't know. I think it would be a fun match, but it's Bret Hart, Jerry Lawler in a kiss my foot match that gets nine minutes and 20 seconds. Bret Hart and Jerry Lawler were wrestling wise were two great tastes that did not taste great together just because yes. Bret Hart's style is very serious. Uh, it's very, you know, we're going to, we're going to treat wrestling like it's, it's real. We're going to, everything's going to be very measured. And Jerry Lawler was part of that Memphis school. He did a lot of comedy in WWF. Um, he was that very you know, old school, like comedic, you know, slip on a banana peel heel. And the feud and, and, and the feud was actually getting a little long in the tooth at this point. Bret Hart at this point and Jerry, Bret, this is King of the Ring 95. The Bret Hart, Jerry Lawler feud started at King of the Ring 93, the first King of the Ring. It was on pay-per-view. That feud starts because Bret Hart won the King of the Ring. And Jerry was like, no, I'm the king. You're not the real king. And then Jerry Lawler attacked him. And then the feud kind of went through Survivor Series. Uh, and it was supposed to be Bret Hart, the Hart family against um, Jerry Lawler and his knights. But then Jerry Lawler had some legal troubles that um, we should probably not speak too much of. He um, was charged with something that sounds like it came out of the Bible. And um, <laughs> Shawn Michaels jumped in in his knights, uh, which makes no sense. Because why would Shawn Michaels have knights? Um and and so that that winds up being the match, and then Lawler doesn't come back until WrestleMania, and they don't really re fully rekindle that uh, Jerry Lawler Bret Hart feud because through '94 Bret's the champion. Uh, Bret's feuding first with Owen, and then he's feuding with uh, Bob Backlund, and then he's feuding with he's and that kind of lasts through WrestleMania of of '95, and then after WrestleMania '95. They, they just kind of bring back the... Like, Jerry Lawler would always take shots of Brett on commentary. I was acting like he really hated them. But then it doesn't really come front of mind again until a few months before this. And the big thing here was Brett had never really beaten Lawler. So they had a few uh, a few big matches. They had a match at SummerSlam 93. Uh, Lawler acted like he was injured. He made Bret Hart wrestle Doink. And then after Doink, Brett beat Doink. Jerry Lawler was fine, and he came and he beat Brett. Uh, they did yeah. a match at In Your House, uh, the In Your House before this, a month before this, and Jerry Lawler beat brett through interference uh with hakushi which comes back to this match so this is the match where brett finally gets a chance to beat jerry lawler yeah and he does and then uh the kiss my foot shenanigan ensues uh then so we're gonna get our final things oh god one of the things leading up to this was um that jerry lawler kept talking about how and even they even do a backstage thing where it's like he has like a stinky, like dirty sock on with a toe missing. And so mm -hmm. they did a whole all these promos about how Jerry Lawler hasn't washed his feet for months. <laughs> He's like standing in barefoot and mud and piles of manure and garbage and stuff. So he so his foot is gonna be as gross and disgusting as possible when Brett has to kiss it. Um Hakushi winds up accidentally hitting Lawler, which leads to a Hakushi baby face turn. So yeah, Lawler has to kiss Brett's foot, but then Lawler, Brett makes Lawler kiss his own foot. And this is what this whole match is leading to. Uh, Brett makes Lawler kiss his own foot. And there's even a, a backstage thing where you see like Lawler brushing his teeth and using mouthwash. I think they cut it out of the uh, the, the Peacock version. But I remember this bit on the, the Jumbotron at the Spectrum. Lawler even throws up 
Lawler throws up uh, in that in that on the pay per view. So yeah. what happens is they uh, when they show Lawler on Raw the next night, he's so he his foot was so disgusting that when he Brett made his made him kiss his own foot, he now has to go to his doctor, his dentist rather, excuse me, and his you know his dentist is right, Isaac. Yep, it is Brett's opponent at SummerSlam, Dr. Isaac Yankum, DDS, DDS. Get it? I Yankum. Yep. DMD. It was actually an old Bobby Heenan joke. DDS. Uh, Yankum was a DDS. I think I'm frozen. Not a DMD. Is it frozen on your end for me? I I, I I can hear you, but your your picture is frozen, yes. Oh my god, I'm having the worst the worst night tonight. There you go. Now I can see you. All right, when you switch good. cameras, after you switch cameras, you were good. Yeah. And now you're back a, to the old, the, other a, it's a fuck, the glag seems great better now, too. I don't know. I'm just kind of tinkering with yeah. things here. I'm yeah, that's, that's yeah. weird. This might that's be in okay. the stream. We, we got two matches left. Let's get through it. Yeah. <laughs> my OD, my ADHD is killing me right now because I'm so... Every, the last three episodes I did, it was the lag was this bad and it's bothering me. But let's get to our, our finals here for the uh, tournament, which will be Mabel defeating Savio Vega in which um, why would you give this this much time but they get eight minutes and 32 seconds um Jeez. with mabel winning and yeah so oh, the 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 uh the cinderella run of savio vega comes to an end here and this match is something i'll remember for one thing you can hear it on the pay-per-view but it was so loud in the building by far the loudest chant of the night is as this match is coming to its end, a thunderous ECW, ECW, ECW. Uh, ECW in 1995 was by far my favorite wrestling because WWF was at its lowest. Uh, I was starting to get old enough that I really wasn't liking the Hulk Hogan stuff anymore in, in WCW. But ECW was like, whoa, this is this is different. This is it, you would always hear people because I, I I grew up right outside of Philadelphia, so ECW was something that people knew about. It was on TV down there. like we had Sports mm -hmm. Channel, uh, and, and ECW was on TV every week. And you would you would always hear these like myths about ECW, like oh like uh, you, you would you would have the one kid at school be like like you'd have like the three nerdy kids who were dorky enough to talk about wrestling, and one of them would be like oh you know WWF and WCW are fake, but ECW is real. Or mm -hmm. oh if you go to the ECW arena and watch a show, you have to sign a waiver so you can't so, like there were always these urban legends about ECW. Um, and it was like later this year that ECW actually ran a few, uh, started running shows at like a, uh, a a youth club field house right by my middle school, which was really cool. Yeah. Um, and and this so is Maple gets his coronation here too. And this also gets credited to Vince finding out or becoming aware of ECW, where he was like, "Well, what is what are they chanting?" That's, yeah, that's one of the yeah the rumors. Yeah. <laughs> So the next pay-per-view that comes into uh, Philadelphia is the much better in 1996. And, I, and unfortunately, I wasn't at this one. I don't, I don't remember why. But in 1996, we get the much better, and we did this on the old show, In Your House Mind Games uh, with yes. Sean and Mankind in a really good match. Really yeah. good match. Go out of your way to watch Sean and Mankind and In Your House Mind Games. That's an incredible match. Uh, but that is when like Sam Man and Tommy Dreamer and Heyman were in the front row and getting the way Bradshaw. And again, people thought that was real. People at mm -hmm. the time thought that was real. But yeah, so this that that is where ECW does kind of pop up on Vince's radar because it's slowly starting to build this groundswell. It's very underground at this point. Uh, it's something where if you like it, it was it wasn't underground to me because it was local. Uh, but it's where people are like slowly start like you would hear about Sabu in the wrestling magazines and you would hear about Shane Douglas, but now it's really getting to be this is the first time like maybe people on a mainstream level hear about ecw yeah uh and we're gonna get to our main event of the evening which would be bam bam bigelow and diesel defeating sid vicious and tatanka with ted dibiase and they're gonna get just 17 sid. He sid minutes oh, i'm sorry sid for 17 Ooh. minutes and 35 seconds Ooh. oh so yeah um not good before this they do have the coronation of mabel where he gets crowned and everything and yes. i was i was above where the i was like right above the um the entrance but just to the left of that to my left uh was 
where they did the coronation. And I just remember the just all of the trash that was streaming in. People were throwing so much stuff at Mabel because he was getting close to the crowd when it's Philadelphia, and they're mm-hmm. especially back then they're insane. So uh, he's yeah, getting close enough that he can get hit. Yeah. <laughs> when was the last time anybody in Philadelphia did anything bad? Don't answer that. The last time <laughs> Shawn Michaels did a clean job, that's when. So they're just pelting Mabel. And I remember one time somebody had like a balled up wrapper from like a hot dog or something. And I remember I, I, I remember this clear as day. They threw somebody threw that and it landed in the crown and then bounced out. Like it was a direct really? hit. Yeah, it was a direct hit. He it, was did he get caught on bumped. camera? Uh, I believe so. He got bum. I don't know if I don't know what the angle was, but you can yeah, you can see on camera he gets bombarded with trash while he's getting coronated. Just bombarded. Yeah. Oh, fair. yankers! Uh, all right, oh, main fair. event time. Yank them! Yank them! Yank no, them! I don't want to. So yeah, this is the culmination of. Kind of the Bam Bam Bigelow against the corporation feud where we have Bam Bam lost to Lawrence Taylor in the main event of the WrestleMania before this, about two, three months uh, before this. So the Million Dollar Corporation is, you know, disgraced by him and he winds up turning baby face. Diesel kind of takes him under his wing, uh, which didn't really work because the click didn't like him. So they didn't really put that much stroke behind it. Uh, on the other side, you have Sid, who is Diesel's main um Sid, who is uh, Diesel's main feud uh, after WrestleMania, Sid, um, because uh, Diesel's match, Diesel's the WWF champion. His match at WrestleMania is against Shawn Michaels. And I, I, I always say that um, this is the big difference for me between Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart. Uh, because in 1995 at the Royal Rumble, Bret Hart wrestles Diesel, winds up being like a double DQ, but Bret Hart wrestles Diesel for the title. And at WrestleMania, Shawn Michaels wrestles Diesel for the title. And if you watch, uh, you can go back. They're both on Peacock. If you watch Bret Hart against Diesel at Royal Rumble 1995, Bret Hart does everything in his power to make Diesel look like a very, very good wrestler and a very, very strong champion. If you watch WrestleMania 15, uh, WrestleMania 11, two months later, Shawn Michaels does everything in his power to make Shawn Michaels look like a great wrestler who should probably be the champion. And that is the difference between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels for me. Just had a good day. I, but anyway, here's uh, and that, and that I, no, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get into this. We're gonna get into this real quick. Here's where I I agree. Okay. I yeah. I agree with the Sean hate. Right. We're gonna do a whole podcast on Brett versus Sean. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a I, debate, I will like never a political debate. All right. uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but where mm-hmm. where I have the difference is I kind of now listen. I know Sean has demons. Not a good human. I also know Brett is in the same boat. But I look at Brett more as the guy who. What didn't does want Brett have? Nepo- What's that? I mean, Brett was kind of an egomaniac himself, what? and fu- but anyway, um, I think Brett was fake as fuck. I, I don't think he put himself out there as the way he actually was. That's, and that, had that's him- not demons. It's demons. That's the worst kind of demons when you're fake as hell. But uh, Brett was the kind of guy. No, who I think the worst didn't- kind of demons is when you sh- when you uh, when you do number two into somebody's salad. <laughs> I think that's the worst demon. Than really being a mark for yourself, but uh, yeah, you're my uh, may vary. Oh, yeah, um, this is a show. This is a show. We're yeah, doing yeah. the Brett versus Sean debate. Yeah, We're putting yeah. that on pay. That's a Patreon exclusive. <laughs> um, I'm gonna wear my Bret Hart glasses, it's gonna be in pink and black. It's gonna be great. All right, so then I won't get too much into it, but I always feel that like Brett was the guy who didn't want the nepotism name because he came from like a dad who ran wrestling and trained wrestling and he, he's really, 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 really well respected. And Sean's the Mark fan who always wanted to be more. And when Sean was coming up, Sean had to fight and claw a little harder because nobody wanted to give him any, any play. So then when finally Sean had the advantage to have the play, he kind of kicked the dirt back in the face of all the people who were trying to keep him back. And Brett was always the guy who was like, well, you're Brett Hart. You're really, really good. You're like the star quarterback. And we always wanted you because you came out of your dad's school. So one guy felt like he deserved the spot. And the other guy felt like he had to work harder from the bottom to get to the spot. And then when they both had it, they both never wanted to relinquish it. Uh, they, they both had to work from the bottom. They yeah they they both had to work from the bottom because they they came up in the land in the time of the steroid freak, 
So they, they yeah. both had to work from the bottom. Uh, yeah. Brett got there a little quicker. And it, does his name have something to do with that? Probably. Uh, probably. Yes. But no, what, what I'm saying is, and, and, and we'll, we'll save that for another time. But if you watch those two matches, I, I think you see a little bit of the difference between what kind of wrestler Bret Hart is and what kind of wrestler Shawn Michaels is. And I think, and, and hey, Kevin Nash is still good friends with Shawn Michaels. So obviously he doesn't really care. But I think yeah. if you really dissect what you could do a whole episode on what went wrong with Diesel's title run. Uh, I think a big thing is um, I, it was dead from the time he wrestled Sean because Sean did everything in his power to make himself look better than Diesel and then he turned baby face. So then it was like, well, OK, so I don't want Diesel to be champion. I want Sean to be champion. And then lo and behold, you know, we come back to 1996 WrestleMania 12. Look what Sean gets. Uh, listen, Brett got fucked over a lot by top guys too. I think they will we'll definitely, well, this is gotta be an uh, episode. Brett versus Sean. So the Do question you here for Brett people, glasses? Was, I, I used to when I was a kid, but I don't know. No, that'll be. Right, I'm gonna find. I'm gonna buy a pair because we're. Um, I want to do a photo shoot of us like the, the uh, around this down. time. I did actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the question that we just put up for anybody that's listening audio only. Uh, if we do audio only, still, uh, do you think that Brett yeah. was that way? Uh, the way he was because of how Hogan did him at Mania in Vegas. No, I think Brett is the way he was because of the way Hogan did him at SummerSlam. So when Hogan does that thing at WrestleMania, now this is a way off tangent, uh, but it's fine. You know what? Let's talk about this instead because here's the thing. Uh, Diesel power bombs to Tonka and wins the match sucked. End of King of the Ring 95. We're moving yep. on. Sorry. <laughs> um, I love it. Thank that's, you. The, all, that's all the discussion. That's all the discussion that match merits. It's a Raw main event. If you've yeah. seen any tag team Raw main event, you've seen that match. And it's worse than most of them. So... Yeah. What happened was uh, Bret Hart loses the title to Yokozuna at WrestleMania 9. This is back in 1993. So Hogan comes in. You know, let me fight. Like, Mr. Fuji challenges Hogan. Hogan comes in, drops leg, wins the title. Hogan, at that point, the whole plan when Hogan beat Yokozuna for that title was that at SummerSlam that year in 1993, Hulk Hogan was going to lose the WWF title to Bret Hart. Clean as a whistle. And it was going to be that passing of the torch moment. Hulk Hogan was champion before he was the guy who carried the company before Brett. It's your company. Now Hulk Hogan um, decided he didn't want to do that. He decided um, Brett is too small. I will drop the belt to Yokozuna at uh, King of the ring, 1993. And then I'm gone. I'm done. He did it. Actually, no, he did that. And I think he did a few matches afterward in Europe for a European tour. Mm -hmm. So then by the time, the time that the time that, um, in fact, I guess there was uh, Brett was so hot at that that he went backstage and they had like a, a, a chalkboard at King of the Ring 95, 93. And Brett's a great artist. Or maybe he just did it on a wall in Magic Marker or something. But he did. Uh, he was so pissed at Hogan at King of the Ring that he uh, he drew on somewhere like a he was a very good artist. And he drew a cartoon of um, Hulk Hogan and Brutus Beefcake engaged in some um, lewd and lascivious acts. <laughs> so, um so Brett was in his feelings at that point. So what happens at um so so what ha happens then is you know Vince kind of kind of gets nostalgic for that muscle guy, and by the time SummerSlam rolls around, that's when we get Lex Luger, the All American Babyface, and Brett doesn't yeah. get the title back until WrestleMania ten, uh, because mm -hmm. Luger didn't work either. Um, yeah. But that is maybe where that Brett look. Hey, it, and, and I understand he's bitter. I understand. Um, I understand that that um he's kind of got this reputation as being a cranky old guy if anybody in the history of professional wrestling has the right to be bitter it is bret hart because of things like that because of the montreal screw job because the the company that screwed him mother over um set up an unsafe stunt that killed his brother a year and a half later oh uh because God. an unsafe worker kicked him in the head and he had a stroke what have i said that's incorrect so far you're reaching. You're reaching. What what have I said that is incorrect so far? Answer the question. <laughs> I, I think you're painting. I think you're taking broad strokes with your with your brush here. Look, hey, I, was it WWE's fault about Owen Hart? No, it was the, the company that set up the rigging. It was their fault. Yeah. It was an accident at the end of the day. It was it was it was it was it was, it it was, was yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Yes, tell me what I'm telling lies. <laughs> it's funny. I'm not here I, to make friends. I, I'm here to make money. 
I love CM Punk and everything about punk that I like. Like is everything. So punk is as loud as I like Sean back in the day of Sean being like petty and loud about it where Brett was more behind the scenes and just let his work speak for himself. And punk's a perfect balance of both of them. Like punk is a hybrid of Brett and Sean. And I, I fucking love them. <laughs> and, and I always forget what CM Punk will say. Brett was right. Brett was right. Cause he leans more towards Brett, but he understands that Brett screwed Brett. And again, I not, well, Vince did, but I, I also understand why it was a business decision. I, I get it. And it yeah. worked. Yeah, you know, so you, but anyway, yeah, well that we're gonna save we're gonna table the rest of that and we'll enough another time. <laughs> another time. We'll, we'll yeah. do the great Brett uh Brett versus Sean debate. I, I can't I, I may wait. call you a stinking hyena in that one. I love it. I love it. Um, all right, so um this Thursday, Pilgaroo Brewing Company will be there for fighter tomorrow. This Saturday tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow yes. we'll be there for, for fighter entertainment. Saturday we'll be at Brewfest. Come drink some beers, watch from pro wrestling. Um and then I think that's pretty much it for a little bit. We'll be back on Sunday night, nine o'clock once again for our next episode, may, which if you ha- haven't had have enough, we may have to flip that. I, I might need, I might need some time to work on that. We may need to flip episodes and pull that, push that back. We, I need some time to work on that. Okay. All right. So then we're going to push yeah. this episode back, which would have been what if King of the Ring 95 was good. Do you have an idea what you yeah. want to do this Sunday? Uh, well, I think we should save the Brett versus Sean thing. Um, yes. Do we have an idea from the audience? Do you have anything you would like us? To, let, let's cover the history of a title. Like you, you pick a title. You got that beautiful intercontinental title. You want to talk about the inter- history of the intercontinental title? I know we've, I think we've done that before, but it was the old show. We can do it again. Now you're frozen. Oh, my wait I, i'm having a day right now <laughs> um so i don't know yeah. how much of that came through but why, why don't we, why don't we do the history of the intercontinental title on set set sunday that the ic title yeah All right. i actually won this i had to go to rio de janeiro and i had to compete in a in a content creator tournament and i won unfortunately uh, the the country the, the the city of 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 Rio did not allow any photography any video camera so it was not captured but you just gotta take my word for it that's how I want it I want it in a yeah. in a content creator battle royal you should BP I threw both Paul brothers out of the ring like nothing all of them the, the all, yeah. all these top name streamers I beat the shit out of them and and here I am as your intercontinental to get YouTube the creator. intercontinental title not the world title. <laughs> No, everybody wants to work. Yeah, I, I, I mean? the, that's my favorite belt design. Yeah, yeah, that's the worker belt. Yeah, that, that's my favorite belt design ever. The old school I see. So that that's a beautiful belt. Is it better than the tag team? Yeah, no, I love that one. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one yeah. too. All right, uh, anything you want to plug, BP? Uh yeah. So I do have um, after all this brewfest and stuff, and uh, not th- it'll be two weeks. From this Saturday, PPW Conquest, August 10th at the Sladington Expo Center, Sladington, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have announced the main event is going to be the TV champion, uh, Nolan Pierce, the PPW champion facade, title versus title. Uh, we've also announced a match I think is going to possibly steal the show. Chris Slade has been out for a while. He is coming back to PPW on August 10th, and he is going to take on um, somebody who stole the show in Orwigsburg. Um, over the uh, over the weekend, dive bomb Diego Hill. I had uh, yeah. I had a certain someone that we might be working with on. Uh, I had a certain someone who we might be working with on Saturday. Come to me after Diego Hill and G, uh, Diego Hill and um, GKM wrestled and go. Who is that guy talking about Diego? And then like, oh, that's Diego. Oh yeah, yeah he's, he's a he's he's a he's a regular PPW and um, yeah yeah he's he's something. So I, they, I, I that just Diego dropped Hill. my last five questions with ABJ. Yeah, five uh, questions. Yeah, with with Diego Hill. Yep. Diego the guy, Hill the guy is, is a gi- Go ahead. He's a gifted professional wrestler. He is a gifted professional wrestler, and he's putting the miles in. If this you kid, can, this kid is is grinding, yeah. and he he wants. Oh it, yeah, and he he, yeah, he and he he needs eyes. He needs eyes on him. 
He is making that drive from North Carolina to Pennsylvania. You know, one, sometimes two weekend, sometimes three weekends a, a month. And it's, that's it, fucking it, hard. It's probably going to happen for him. He, 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 he's that good. He's that good. Yeah. That drive uh, is going to have Diego Hill and Chris driving Slade. your car from show to show to show is it takes so much out of your personal life, so much out of your yeah. car, your mileage, your money, your time. Like it's it's a lot. And this mm-hmm. kid's willing to do it. He's willing to grind. We're going to have uh, Sammy Chaos and Harleen Lopez, the two hardest hitting women in PPW for the women's title. Can't wait for that one. Uh, Travis Norbert's going to bring a team. Chris White. Uh, the head honcho of the Slatington Expo Center and uh, one of the head honchos for Funk Brewing. He's going to be fielding a team. They're going to go head to head again. Uh, I, I want to make sure I'm just announcing matches we've already announced because I don't want to give away stuff. Uh, I know one here, here, sneak preview. I know, I think nobody watches this. I don't think safe. we have officially not. Uh, I think we. Oh, who's going to give me trouble? Paul? Who's <laughs> Paul going to yell at me? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, no, I, I know this one we put out on the uh, email list and I think we're putting it out tonight for the no limits title, Tom Mitchell, making his first defense of the no limits title against the former champion, the greatest no limits champion there ever was Rembrandt, the greatest no limits champion there ever was. Uh, and then if you like Sammy K- yes. chaos, you get to hear her first full story Monday at seven o'clock on the ABJ yeah, podcast. Oh, that's going to be so good. And then Tuesday, I'll have the founding member of uh, Taking Back Sunday bass player, Eddie Reyes, on the podcast. So that'll be a lot of fun, too. So uh, those episodes uh, titles are still good, but we just got to change up next week for that and do the history of the IC championship. Um, Definitely putting perfect on the thumbnail. Sean's on the thumbnail. Oh, yeah. Uh, Moncho Man's on the thumbnail. Randy Savage better be on the thumbnail. Razor Ramon. He's front and center. He's on. He's front and center. Razor Ramon's on the thumbnail. The Miz, Jericho, Luther, Gunther, the, the Mountie. The I only like Gunther's ring because it was six six six. But all right, that'll do it. This lag's fucking pissing me no, off. No, I gotta go figure Mountie. some stuff out. Yeah, uh, the Mountie, of course. But yes, we will. We will get <laughs> out of here. Here's some music by the Converse Kid. We'll see you guys very very soon. We're out of here. Oh, t-shirts, merchandise, support the podcast, join us on YouTube, subscribe and 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 and, and do a monthly fee if you can. If you can't, I understand, but go grab some merchandise and some t-shirts on T Public T Spring and uh yeah, super chats and donations if you're watching it later. If you're listening to this later in your audio in your car or if you're watching this on YouTube still, subscribe to us on Spotify and give us a player a listen. Five-star reviews help out a lot. There's a lot of ways to consume this podcast and this content. Follow us on social media and we'll see you on the next one. Tornado Tag, we're out of here. I wanted to do.